Hey everyone, this is going to be video two in the learning unit and we're going to talk about the condition stimulus, unconditioned stimulus, condition response, unconditioned response, and how to tell those two things apart. Um, this can be a really difficult concept to understand. So if you are reading the textbook and feeling I'm totally lost, that's normal. It takes a long time to get these straight. Please don't be frustrated with it. Um, if this still doesn't help clear it up, then please email me if you still have questions and we will get it figured out. So I'm going to minimize myself so you can see my one example slide that I'm using here because I'm just going to try to keep all this as a visual as straightforward as possible. So starting off with, we always start with an unconditioned stimulus and an unconditioned response. That is your first pair. UCS and UCR. This is something that is a reflex. This is something that already exists in you, okay? You're in the shower and hot water starts spraying out and you jump out of the line of the water. You eat a certain bacteria that you get with food poisoning and you throw up. You drink too much alcohol and you throw up. Um, somebody makes a loud noise behind you and you jump, you startle, right? These are all reflexes. This is not something that you have to learn. This is not something that anybody has to teach you. So this process is something that your body naturally does. So an example of food poisoning, the bacteria in your body is the unconditioned stimulus. The throwing up, the nausea, the vomiting is the unconditioned response. Same with, with uh, drinking too much alcohol, right? Too much alcohol in your body, unconditioned stimulus. Throwing up, unconditioned response. Hot water in the shower, jumping out of the shower. Hot water hitting your body, unconditioned stimulus. Jumping out of the hot water, unconditioned response. A loud noise and you startling behind you. The loud noise, unconditioned stimulus the startle response, jumping, unconditioned response. The word, the key word is unconditioned. You didn't have to do anything to train your body, to train your brain to do any of these things. It was a natural reflex. Now, when you have a neutral stimulus, a neutral stimuli that's floating around out here somewhere, and it becomes paired with this unconditioned stimulus, the neutral stimuli or stimulus becomes a conditioned stimulus, conditioned stimuli. I don't know why I used the plural when I was typing this up, but it becomes conditioned stimulus, a CS. So I'm going to walk through those same examples again. Um, I'll actually start with the example in your textbook that it gave of little Albert and startling whenever he saw a rabbit. So the way that they conditioned this was obviously children are going to startle when they hear a loud noise. So what they did was he would be playing with a rabbit and they would make a loud noise and he would startle, right? The neutral stimulus was the rabbit. The unconditioned stimulus was the loud noise, right? Because remember his reflex, loud noise, startle response. So they paired that unconditioned stimulus, the loud noise, with the rabbit, the neutral stimulus. And what they found over time was little Albert would start showing a startle response whenever he would see a rabbit because he was expecting the loud noise to come with it. So at that point, the rabbit had become a conditioned stimulus because he started reacting to something that would have otherwise been neutral. He would have been reacting to the rabbit. Let's go through our other examples that we posed with food poisoning. You're at a barbecue, the next, later that night, the next day, you end up with food poisoning. You're not totally sure what food had been out for too long, but you're pretty darn sure it was the potato salad. And you have this, you, you had the flavor and the texture of throwing up the potato salad. If you've ever had food poisoning, you know what I'm talking about. And now for like two years, you cannot enjoy the 
detest potato salad. You hate how it smells. You look at it and you kind of gag. You cannot bring yourself to eat it. Again, if you've had food poisoning, you know that feeling that I got sick off of this food and now I do not want to eat this food at all. Just looking at it, smelling it, seeing it makes me feel sick, right? So in that example, again, the bacteria causing the vomiting, unconditioned stimulus bacteria, vomiting, unconditioned response. The neutral stimulus, potato salad, right? Because you paired that with the bacteria that made you vomit, and now the neutral stimulus, that potato salad, you shouldn't have any reason to dislike or have an aversion or gag when you see potato salad, but now that it has become a conditioned stimulus. It has changed from neutral to conditioned because it was paired with that unconditioned stimulus. Example of alcohol. Um, if you've ever drank to the point that you've gotten sick and if there was a specific thing you got sick on, say it was tequila, um, seeing tequila, thinking about tequila, smelling tequila, right? That might give you that like gaggy feeling that I, I can still drink, I can still enjoy wine or beer or whatever, but no tequila. Why? Because a neutral stimulus was mixed with an unconditioned stimulus and now you're reacting to that neutral stimulus. My, uh, my intro to psych professor actually did a funny thing with this when I was in college that he had brought a bottle of tequila in his bag um, and he pulled it out and set it on the desk. And he looked for people's facial expressions. And he and that was the example that he started with is everybody who just reacted to me taking out a bottle of tequila, right? You have experienced this. Um, what was the other example I used? Oh, the, the hot water in the shower, um, right? I grew up in a super old house. And if somebody flushed the toilet while you were in the shower, the water would turn scalding hot. And it was a really small house with really thin walls. So if you were in the shower in one bathroom and you heard, you could hear through the wall, the toilet flushing in this other bathroom. Um, and so whenever you heard, whenever I heard that sound, I would immediately like jump out of the water. And that actually lasted for several years afterwards when I moved out. If I was in the shower and I heard somebody else in my apartment flush the toilet, I would jump out of the water because growing up for so many years, like, this water is going to be hot because I just heard this noise. So neutral stimulus, hearing a toilet flushing in the other room, but it was paired with an unconditioned stimulus. I'm now being pelted with hot water in the shower. So now that neutral stimulus became a conditioned stimulus. Hearing the toilet flushing is now a conditioned stimulus. So now let's get to the responses. Let me scoop myself up here so I'm not in the way. So. When we're talking about the responses, the conditioned response is always the same thing as the unconditioned response. It has changed to a conditioned response based on which stimulus is activating it, okay? If you're vomiting because you ingested a bacteria, that's this up here. If you feel nauseated and like you're gonna vomit because you see or smell potato salad, you're now dealing with a conditioned response because what you're reacting to is not the unconditioned stimulus. What you're reacting to is the conditioned stimulus. If you're jumping out of the, the shower, jumping out of the line of the water when you hear a toilet flush, this is no longer an unconditioned response. This is now a conditioned response because what you're responding to is the conditioned stimulus. If you're jumping when you see a rabbit, it is now a conditioned response because you're no longer reacting to the loud noise like a reflex. You're now reacting to a conditioned stimulus. Same reaction, same behavior, but it's conditioned and not unconditioned based on what is triggering it, the conditioned stimulus, okay? Gagging whenever you smell tequila or see somebody pouring tequila shots. That is a conditioned response because you're reacting to a conditioned stimulus. So hopefully that helped clear things up a little bit.
If not, if you still watch this video and thought, okay, I still can't label these, I can't get this straight, send me an email. Um, I can try to forward on some other helpful videos or we can work through this in a way that would be helpful. This is an important concept in psychology, so hopefully it's one that after reading and watching a couple times, you can kind of start to get a handle of. Let me know if you have any questions.